Hey, aloha everybody, and welcome to Bocce Talk. I am Andrew, the security guy, and Gordo the Texar is busy, so he's not here today. Angus went with him, but I got a great guest for you. Mr. Rodney Thayer is here, security analyst, security expert, all things security. And we're gonna talk a lot about penetration testing today and some of the uh, maybe more behind the scenes things that you don't know. So stick around for this. Rodney, thanks for coming, brother. No problem. Appreciate you coming in on a, on a, on a short lease there. Um, so I know you've been on before, yeah. uh, but go ahead and give, uh, give our guests that are watching today a little bit of your background, kind of where you grew up and some of that stuff. You so know I grew up it. in Massachusetts. Um, Sorry. Been doing, hey, you know, I moved, to, <laughs> I moved to California, so, you know, I don't do snow no more. Um, so I've uh, been doing computer stuff uh, for decades, uh, starting since the 70s. Uh, Did they have computers then? Uh, yeah, we, we, they only had zeros. We had to pound them flat with rocks to make ones. Uh, that's kind of the way it worked. Um, so I've, I've been doing software development and networking and then got into encryption and then from there got into doing security stuff. Mm. And you know, there's something in water in Massachusetts, that, something about the Redcoats in 1776 and all that. So <laughs> it turns out I'm really good at thinking like a bad guy. So I got ah. into the computer security, cybersecurity side of things. Okay, and so, um, and so how, how uh, so you've been out in Hawaii before? You've yeah. done some work out yeah. here as well. I know we've we got a project yeah. now, which is fun. All right. Well, we wanted to get into, for our audience today, really into penetration testing. And um, this is a, a piece that sounds maybe meaner than it is, but it's really a tool to help people understand what they've got, what, what their attack surface is. Yeah. And um, uh, well, there's some components to what's called the cyber kill chain. And I thought we'd just sort of walk through that and let Rodney sort of give you the, the, what that piece is about and what happens in that space. Uh, so we, we tend to start with what's called reconnaissance. Um, you know, hackers don't just, just show up and start doing things. They're smart and they like to look and see what's available. So in your perspective, what goes on in that reconnaissance phase? You know, what, what are you looking at for a client? So it's a, um, this is all in cyberspace. So we're doing things looking at networks and websites and uh, email and, and, and things like that. Um, but you do the equivalent thing you would do in the real world, you know, meet space, as the hackers would say. Uh, so you go around and look for places where there are weaknesses, uh, chinks in the armor. You know, if, if you were a bad guy walking down the street in the middle of the night, uh, throw a row of shops, you check all the doorknobs, see if somebody left the door unlocked. Mm -hmm. So you do things like that, try to figure out if there's something that was unsecured or something that was in, in the internet case, is there something misconfigured? Because oh, if they got one thing wrong, if they screwed up how they set up their website for one thing, they may also have other things configured wrong, I and see. you can therefore you can start to identify weaknesses and things. So in the reconnaissance phase, you probably wouldn't attack, but you maybe would just begin to formulate the types you, of you attacks should, you were going to do. Yeah, you would, you would kind of con, you know, decide which ones, or, or decide what you'd have to go back and do some homework on. Um, and certain homework. cases... There's homework. Uh, there's Hacker homework. homework. Yes, yes. <laughs> ha hackers, like everybody else, use Google. Uh, okay. So you know, if I if if I'm walk by and there's a sticker on the, some you know object in the lobby that has some funny word in it, I'll go Google the word, and that might be the vendor name. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, the vendor might very proudly publish their manual online, complete with the default passwords for their gear. Okay. So you know. If it's you know Billy Bob's Widgie Bob, I'd go look that up online and find the default passwords, and and so we, then I have armed with that information to go back and, and try to use that for the attack. I see. Yeah, a lot of times they'll give you like password length or type, and so you kind of know what you have to do yeah, if yeah. you're going to brute force it or something. And, you, and again, this goes back to the you're kind of doing recon time things. If you if you find people using four character passwords, then they've got weak passwords, so you can kind of uh -huh. you now know that there there are things about the design of the system or at least the way it was deployed mm. uh, that might be issues. So reconnaissance reveals a lot. So, so once you've done this reconnaissance, the next phase in the kill chain is this intrusion portion. And what does that look like? How, are we trying to go deep at this point? So or? at that point, what you're trying to do is get inside the network that you're trying to attack. Uh, or the, the infrastructure is a, a sort of a better way to look at it. You know, these days, there's many, many networks, in, in, uh, like inside a building or in a bank or, or any kind of organization. Uh, so you're trying to get inside the network somewhere. Uh, so that you have a, a, a toehold and, and probably do more attacks from that. Oh, so get in there and then you're going to maybe hide out right. or, or, or plant something. Or, right, or plant something or use that as a place where you can, you can reach even further inside the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And would this always be like um, uh, done from behind the keyboard remotely or, or would you possibly have entered a facility in this intrusion phase? Oh, going or? into the facility, that would require work, dude. Um, <laughs> you stay so, home and do this yeah, in your pajamas? You do this from the nearest Starbucks, you know, preferably with your favorite, you know, Frappuccino. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the, you, because everything's connected on the internet, uh, it, it's often done not physically at the location. Okay. Um, so you, but you have to be connected to things through the internet. And 
you know, the internet isn't like, you know, I didn't have to swim here from California, but I did have to ride in an airplane for five hours. Sure. But, you know, you're only like 100 milliseconds away if I had been trying to do it through the network. Yeah, internet. Okay. Um, so you could be anywhere and get a great distance. Mm. And so, um, but once our intrusion's done and we've gotten this toehold or we've, we've opened a door that we can get in and out of pretty readily, uh, this exploitation phase is what they talk about next in the kill chain. So uh, what, what am I going to do then, you know, when I, when I start to exploit this, this, so you, these you, vulnerabilities, uh, I guess, that I've found? Yeah, well, you, you, uh, between the recon and the, and the initial um, penetration into the, into the site, uh, you'd go identify what kind of targets are, are uh, most likely, either the ones that are easiest to go after or the ones that are the highest value. Okay. Uh, so you end up doing some, sort of a triage kind of thing. And again, these are hackers, so the triage, it's not like the military where we do a calculation on all this. It's, it, it can be something like, you know, I'm bored, I want to go to dinner, or I'm only going to do the quick ones. Uh, okay. so, they, so you can have some kinds of attention span issues of the hackers sometimes. Mm. And the fact they're sloppy like that actually is good because you can, they'll cut corners and then you can identify things are happening. You get more of a, uh, oh. you know, the good guys who are trying to defend things can get, get some information out of that, get a little bit of signal. Ah, so in, in the exploitation phase, it's m maybe they're a little more vulnerable to being caught or a little more yeah. vulnerable to, to revealing yeah. that they're there. And yeah. you, may, you may find them in this phase. Um, so, so I, 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 I'm in, uh, I've, I've found some, some, some stuff I want to get, I found some exploitable material, maybe I can sell this information yeah. or whatever. Um, uh, the next thing they talk about in the kill chain is privilege escalation. So what am I going to try to do there? So if you first thing you're doing is looking for information you get with relatively little effort. Uh, okay. Like uh, if you're in a Windows environment, if somebody forgot and set up a file share with a bunch of documents in it which isn't protected, but one of the documents is all the passwords to the firewalls. Oh, okay. And believe it or not, people do things like this. Wow. Okay. Uh, so you would go look for any information or, or weaknesses you can use to change from being a regular user into some sort of privileged user. Okay. Uh, or users on other kinds of systems. So like if you're in a bank, you know, you'd get into the ATM and then you try to get past the ATM to get into the good machine in the back room that can transfer millions of dollars. I see. Um, so you're trying to try to in in increase your privilege within the, the so, victim's network. So like they call this like a super user or an admin, yeah, an or administrative or user or, like or root yeah. or something like that. If you so, see a bumper sticker in a car that says got root, you should be worried. Is that right? That's yeah. not the guy you want roaming your neighborhood? Not necessarily. Jumping yeah. on your Wi-Fi network? Right. Um, is, is this worth spending time on? I mean, if someone in, in certain environments, is it more valuable? Because if you've... You're past the exploitation, so you're kind of available to being caught. So would you spend a lot of time trying to escalate yourself? Can you hide yourself once you do that? Or? You can, well, you try to do whatever the easy targets are. Again, you're trying to do triage stuff. Okay. Um, depending on what the adversary is going after and how valuable the target is, they may set up so they can take their time doing it. So like if you're going after, after a big retail operation and you think you can get your hands on millions and millions of credit cards, it would be worth taking the time to set up set up some exploits, try to set up some back doors that you can get back in later mm -hmm. uh, because you know, they may or may not be able to detect that kind of stuff. I see. Um, so then, and then you know, if you can get that thing set up so you can take your time, that would, you would do that. So what does it look like you know, from the keyboard perspective to, the, to this hacker as he's, as he's moving around? Is he adept at, at, at knowing where he is, at seeing other machines and what type of operating systems they have and things like that? Is, are there tools that he's using? There, there's tools they're using that, that okay. know specific machines. And you end up with specialties. It's you know it's it's like a lot of other things. There are specialists. So there you know there are Mac hackers and Android hackers and Windows ah, hackers and, okay. and Linux hackers. So do they and team and, up? If, I, if I'm if I'm hacking oh, yeah, and I need up, a yeah. I need a Unix guy, I just call my buddy Unix and say, yeah. hey, can you help me hack? Or this they'll thing? also team up in specialties. So like I do, oh. I do the recon thing and the initial a uh, access because with my engineering background, I can see the weaknesses more than. You know, okay. Some twenty-year-old punk who actually is good at writing exploits because you know they'll stay up all night and write the code, and I know, see. I'd rather sleep. Okay. Um, so you so you end up with specialty combination teams. Interesting, interesting. Um, and so I guess that brings us to this next phase of the of the um, kill chain as we're talking about the lateral movement. So so I'm, I'm I've gotten in the network. I've, I've maybe taken some stuff that helps me learn more about the network. Um, I've escalated some of my privileges, and now I need now I want to move around. And is this so? You know, they I know they talked about I think Target how they initially got into a, a, a POS vendor, got them in a system, and then they were able to move out throughout the entire like credit yeah. card system, yeah. things like that. So is that lateral movement, or are we moving anywhere that I can get to? So, uh, well, they look around to see what's available for targets. Okay. Um, 
Um, and uh, no pun intended. Um, and so they, they, uh, um, you would find you, the things you'd be trying to look for, like you might be looking for credit card data, or you might be looking for oh. financial information, or if you're in a hospital, you're trying to find the you know combination codes to the drug closet or something. Okay. Um, or, but, or healthcare but, records or whatever yeah. you can sell, but, but, or whatever you, know, that, you can compromise. Yeah, but you're also you're, you're trying to monetize the experience probably. So, sure. So if you're in a retailer and you find the drug closet combination, you probably grab a copy of that so you can sell that tool. I uh, see. So you, okay. you, you know, people people will uh, will have sort of collateral um, stuff that they would steal. Mm. Um, and the lateral thing is that yeah, they move around between different kinds of systems. So like in the Target case, they were going after the uh, a vendor who sold them air conditioning equipment. And right. They move from that to the. Uh, to the corporate network, and they move from that to the cash the, register the POS network, system, to the POS sure. network. Yeah, yeah, it was um, an HVAC vendor. Yeah, they yeah, brought yeah. them in the door. So, would you would you try to jump on another vendor? Say, if you're in there and you see a guy plug in and he, he, he doesn't know what he's doing, and you can jump on him and go out the door with him to someplace else. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or if you, or for example, if you find vendors who, uh, you know, if, if people in there have uh, people in their supply chain who are a little sloppy about installing equipment, if you catch them using default credentials at one job site, you know, you might actually follow that vendor's trucks around the city and you know when they pull into the next bank they're doing the firewall install for you can they probably be sloppy there too oh, I see okay so you can you're, you can profile the the victims and sort of see if they have patterns that you can use repeatedly hmm. um, the 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 next piece of the um, of the kill chain is called obfuscation and so this is just trying trying to Cover your not tracks. be found so you're staying there you don't want to be found or maybe you've left and you still don't want Either to be way. found um, what, what do these tracks look like I mean, uh, so you do things like you would make sure there's no logs left behind. If you log oh, the clear all the, you delete all the log all files logs. or something. Okay. Uh, you'd make sure that as little as possible, there's little information as possible of anything you attempted to log into. So this oh. is why when we give security advice, we want to make sure people have enough uh, instrumentation in their network so they know about failed login attacks. I see. So you know, you so know, this is when you were trying different passwords and right. it didn't work. That should show up. That should show up. That should come up with an error and, and that should can, be logged somewhere. Okay. And is that is it a is it a common practice for network administrators to to alarm on that kind of thing so that they see that behavior yeah, in their it, network or is it the kind of thing enough. that's easy to? It's getting oh. better. I see. Um, it used to be people would never log these things because they would just get continuous alarms from from normal users. You know, mistype the password once kind of things. Hmm. So, so the false alarm rate used to be the issue. Wow. Nowadays you can get more and more sophisticated equipment so it can help you deal with the false alarm so you know when when you try to log into your bank account once and type the password wrong yeah whatever when they see me log in 72 times from Hawaii to my California bank yeah, within, account within two seconds within right? two seconds because <laughs> it's a machine they, doing yeah it, okay. they would they would decide that was an uh, an odd behavior and you can there's equipment that would flag that and then and then you're trying to make sure that the whoever has to look at these alarms has a reasonable alarm you know, data to look at. They're not having to look at false alarms. Sure. Okay. It's not just you know when a mango falls off a tree and makes the fence light up. And so we're so we've gotten in. We've hidden ourselves. We've deleted the fact that we're there. Because presumably they could maybe f figure out who you were. If a forensic investigator could follow the data about you backwards. And if you weren't doing it at Starbucks, if you were dumb enough to do it at home, for example, maybe they could come knocking on your door. Yes. If you were if you were silly enough to do attacks from your home network, yeah. yes. Then some people occasionally do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like any other kind of environment where there's bad guys. You know, some of the bad guys are pretty dumb. Sure. Uh, but yeah, they, they would be able to track you back to the addresses. There's a lot of techniques to hide where you are on the internet. Sure. Um, you know, being in a Starbucks is in fact probably could pretty good uh, hiding. If it's um, like five states over. Not, well, if it's not five the one states the over and they don't find you for a month. Uh, then that Starbucks, whatever logging they've got in that, probably has been flushed out. It's gone. Okay. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so once you're hidden, now the next the next piece of the kill chain is this denial of service that they talk about. So, uh, where resources become unavailable for like a legitimate user. Yeah. And so, what's the what's the idea there? Because it seems like there'd be notification that something's wrong. Well, so the, the causing the denial of service by itself can have value if you're the bad guy. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe someone's paying you to, to Maybe turn someone's them. paying you. I maybe see. you're trying to hassle a company that uh, has uh, operators who get uh, book orders on the phone. Okay. So, you know, you go shut down the phone system so the competitor would pay you to shut down the phone system so that company would lose money. So okay. just the act of having the lost resources can be the target. Uh, the other thing is if you have uh, denial of service, then you've got, you know, you're in the middle of a storm, everything's dark, and you can then go after things and people wouldn't see it. Ah, so okay. There's, so if there's a denial of service and I'm causing failed login attempts, they're not going to notice those in the middle of the millions of other kinds of errors. Of all the problems. Kind of thing. Gotcha. So we're talking about the, the cyber kill chain right now with Rodney Thayer, and we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Thank you. 
Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Hey, welcome back to Bocce Talk. Andrew, the security guy. I'm sorry, Gordon's not here. Angus isn't here, but Mr. Rodney Thayer is. And we are talking about penetration testing. We've been chasing the cyber kill chain down, uh, reconnaissance, intrusion, exploitation, privilege escalation, lateral movement, obfuscation, denial of service, and finally exfiltration, the, sort of the jackpot. Uh, of the hacker world when they're yeah. doing what? Taking all the goods home? So this is the, you know, this is the Ocean's Eleven scenario. We got all the gold out of the basement. Now we gotta, <laughs> now we gotta put it in the pickup well, we truck get and, away with and, it. and get away with it. Yeah, ah, so, so exfiltration is, you know, this is what, you know, we're, you know, the bad news is we're all copying military terms and everybody knows what they mean now. Uh, so <laughs> exfiltration is the oper opposite of infiltration. Okay. So it's when you've got something on the inside and you've got to sneak it out the door. Okay. So like you're trying to um, get all the credit card numbers and take them back uh, mm. you know, outside the network or steal the company's trade secrets. And I guess you could still get caught at that point and you stop. Still so all caught. this work you've done, now you know, right. there's, there's a, you're vulnerable so, so you, on the way you out the door. You combine all these skills together, so you want to make sure you cover your tracks as much as possible mm. or leave as much as damage as possible so they're too busy cleaning it up. Wow. So the penetration test is designed to sort of detect these opportunities in the kill chain yep. inside a place. So a white hat hacker like like yourself goes yep. into an organization, and and do you kind of go through these steps, kind of mimic these steps? You, you you do a combination of going through these steps, and and I for each step of the process identifying. Um, where the, the, the network you're looking at, where it might have some weakness that, that these things might apply. Hmm, okay. uh, so you, know, you might just actually just run around the kill, the, the kill chain and do the whole thing. Okay. You might start, you, know, might, you might just do recon. Um, okay. you, you, uh, and the idea is to try to find the information that would be helpful to the, uh, the people who own the network to actually defend it. Okay. Uh, to find you know loose ends. So maybe you give them a report back just after the recon piece yeah. and say, hey, this is some stuff yeah. I found. I could do this. So that, or that's that. the thing about being a white hat hacker. You're, you're working for the organization that's trying to defend. Okay. So you know you might do the recon and then go back and talk to the network group and say, you know, hey folks, you know, we found X Y Z kind of a problem on this server, and you know, you'd be a reasonable person about it. You know, they may actually turn to their team and say, look, we got 52 servers like that. Let's go check all of them. Wow. Uh, okay. So you know, you're, you're trying to help people improve their defenses and be able to be. Um, be able to have a, a better chance of surviving the next attack. Mm, yeah, because the attacks don't stop, that's for sure. Right. So can you, can you share, I know you do a lot of, of government, I know you do a lot of things you can't talk about. Can you, can you give us some examples of, of organizations that, that you know, you've engaged in that you, know, you found stuff just really bad or really good or what's your, you know, what t oh, give us a couple see. of the juicy bits. Let's see, juicy bits. So, you know, it's 2017 and we've been doing things like pen testing for 15 years, 20 years, okay. maybe you want to be, you know, depending on how you want to measure it. So there's a lot of this stuff that it's kind of shocking it still happens. Uh, oh. People still use short passwords. Uh, you, mm. can, you can buy a Raspberry Pi for $35 and run a program on it that can crack four-digit passwords, if they were all numbers, in like two minutes. Wow. Uh, okay. So it doesn't require giant supercomputers anymore. Ah, so um, the hacking's easier? Hacking's or? easier, yes. Ah, so you don't um, have to be... A Perhaps as gifted as yourself. Right, right. Yeah. See, the the technology of doing hacking has has been around for a while and it's evolving. Um, okay. And and some of these tools can be used for good and bad. It's the same thing as anything else. You know, if I take a if I take a paperclip and I straighten it out and I use it to pop the CD ROM out of your old fashioned PC with a CD in it, right? You know, uh -huh. it's like then I'm your tech and I'm helping you. If I take the same paperclip and stick it in the lock, try to fiddle the pins and all that, then I'm doing a lock pick. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so, you so, know, so it depends on how you use the tool. The tool has multiple uses. The tools have multiple <laughs> uses. Yes. Um, but the tools are getting more and more sophisticated. Mm. So they can do that. They can also automate the whole process: the recon, find things, penetrate, you know, oh. lateral, all that kind of stuff. So this is a piece of software that you these can These are pieces of software. You can okay. you can buy these things. Sometimes get them for free. 
uh, and uh, and so you don't have to be that competent to run these things. Wow. Uh, so the I, I've, I've seen like examples on the dark web of guys selling some malware services and you know a DDoS as a service and yeah. things like that. So these attacks are yeah. So what you, what you need is a bad attitude in the credit card. Or maybe is some, that it? Maybe <laughs> some Bitcoin if you're and buying. You can hurt, hurt the world or hurt yeah, hurt, hurt, hurt somebody world. that you so. But, so but finding if, so kind of things I found about finding yeah. you know short passwords. Um, there's a lot of tools that can can uh, break weak encryption. So you know, okay. it used to be you know in the late '90s we would talk about how encryption algorithms were really hard to break and you need millions and millions of computers and nobody could do it. And you know nowadays, you know with Google and Amazon and all these other things, people talk about things like. Uh, 20,000 cores being available at one time, a core being one computer. Okay. And so you can get massive computing power, and so things we used to think were easy, were, were uh, difficult problems that would protect us, uh, difficult computing situations that would protect us, they're not so difficult anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're getting, that's why people are getting more and more sensitive to uh, using strong encryption. I see. And you'll and notice like the browsers are getting more, I call it militant, but their browsers are getting more and more uh, active at um, giving you warnings when you're using weak mm -hmm. weak hash algorithms. Yeah, if you don't get the them. lock, if you're not using, you using TLS, the lock, if there's no encryption right. on a website when you and go there. And you'll get there. lots of warnings, and pop-up sure. warnings and things. So, yeah, um, you know, hope, hopefully they're clear messages for end users to use. Uh, you know, they, the other thing that goes on to this day is that the, the some of the error messages are really arcane. Oh. Uh, so, you know, People will call me up and say, "This dialog box said this sentence. What does that mean?" Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then you can't. And do tell. you trust it, right? Like, I, you know, if I get messages like that, I don't. I don't believe any of it. Well, I just, that, I, I turn, it. close yeah. it all, turn it off. You know, like yeah. whatever, whatever's things, happening you, there, I don't need it. Right. All those wonderful things you can do with the browser to, to render different things, animation, all this other stuff. Yes, that's just like that's another tool you can all use maliciously. You can use those maliciously. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know if our, if our user base really understands that. You know, you can embed malware in an image. You can embed bad code into videos. So in and modern so. times, we don't just have static information like a picture. Mm -hmm. It's not just a picture. It's a bunch of bits, and there may actually be programs or other kinds of information attached. Uh, yeah, attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, Word documents is another example. Yeah. Uh, people will attach macros to these things. And this is, you know, t it's trying to help people do work. So you might have extremely complicated macros in a spreadsheet you're using to talk to your accountant, mm -hmm. uh, calculating profits, all sorts of things like that. Uh, the same sort of mechanisms can be, you know, potentially used maliciously. I see. So, so and, and then delivered to you via your email inbox or by right. some link or something. You somebody went, something gave you a USB file for. that you plugged in. Uh, oh, yeah. never do that. Yeah, never do that. Right. Yeah. So do you find do you find a lot of open um, uh, networks that, that are, are people disabling USB in the world you see, or is it still Not just enough, a, a no. problem, really? No. I, I, I collect stories about how the, oh yes, it's a, it's a secure network, you know, right up till the day they call me to, you know, march me into the command center to help take the virus off their computer they're using in their air traffic control system that, or something. It came in via USB. Came in via, by somebody with USB. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So what else? What else have you been working? on? I mean, so we've seen a lot of. I mean, healthcare has been attacked really badly. Um, the financial sector obviously stays yeah. under constant attack. Um, what, uh, what? What's your what's your uh, experience in those markets? Have you have you been called in on on some of these? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the 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 beginning is that they they're, they're all running the standard kind of computers, so they've got to go through. They have all the same challenges everybody else has. So ah. you know, people running a bank have to worry about things like are are their Windows machines patched? Okay. And do they have proper firewalls? And, sure. And, uh, and other kinds of issues like um, if there are people with cell phones, are they you know are they using them to share data over the public network that they mm -hmm. shouldn't be? Uh, so we so we get those kinds of things in in the most sensitive of, of institutions. Wow. Yeah. And you know we sort of saw you know some of what you mentioned. Uh, I know we were on the on the call with uh, Jay Fidel for Think Tech on Monday talking about WannaCrypt, which you know really just people just didn't patch their stuff or they used old un unpatchable stuff. Yeah. You know, is that common? Do you see a lot of people with older firmware? I mean, businesses try to, you know, extend their investment, right? Is what they would say. But well, they try to, to extend their investment. The other thing is that they're, they're more and more of their business is relying on networking or okay. internet access. So, you know, people have a storefront in the internet. They they may actually still have a physical storefront, but that's getting pretty rare. Mm -hmm. uh, so their whole business is running through the internet. And the good part of it is that all of the the back end 
services, insurance, bookkeeping, you know, compliance rules, all this stuff is, is looking at that more and more. So there are, there are more and more business drivers to do things securely. Mm -hmm. um, also, people are realizing that if you screw it up, it's a big deal. So mm. it's now getting to the point where, you know, if your network gets hacked, you know, the board of directors might get sued. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, now the big boss is, you know, potentially personally at risk if there were an issue. So, so they think about the risk. Is more. that swinging some of the calls that you, you know, the opportunities you get invited yes. into now? Is it, is it coming use, from the board instead of the IT we department? We get to use four-letter words to start with R. It's called risk. Yes. Um, mm. And and uh, mm. yes, it doesn't matter how technical or non-technical the CEO is. When you start talking about the risk issues, they will probably listen. Mm. Uh, and that's getting better and better. People are learning that that's important, and and there's more and more attention being paid to this. Yeah. Do, do you think that we're prone to, you know? Like just as um, let's just say rampant of of, uh, of, of hacking opportunities as uh, WannaCrypt was, do you think there's still more of that to to come for the industry oh, yeah. that's not prepared? Yeah. And do you think patches will help, or do you think there will be? You think there's some because this was a t an attack against older so, yeah, so systems and unpatched systems. Do you think WannaCrypt was catching people with bad habit doing having bad habits, bad habits and there you and, go. Um, and using old equipment? So. You know whether or not you have hackers to worry about. You should be doing backups of your information, and this is yes. a, you know I live in California. Always it's the backup. same story as, as ever was. You know there might be an earthquake. You know your building might fall down. Yeah. You probably should deal with that. You should probably make sure your records you have a copy somewhere else, preferably mm -hmm. not on the fault line. Yeah. Uh, so you know and these kinds of uh, good habits have been people known about these you know since, at least since they've been using computers. Uh, you know <laughs> are people uh, just lazier or is there just so much more to do? People do are, are so used to highly reliable equipment that. They, you know, ah. people will keep their entire life on their cell phone and never do a backup. You know, <laughs> and every picture you have, you know, oh, and then of their all phone your relatives who have died in the last ten years, you know, you've got still wow. got the pictures on your cell phone. You never have a copy. So people, people have gotten out of the habit of doing backups. What, hmm. what little habits there? The other thing that's happening now is people want to share more and more information. Okay. Um, you know, social networking, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And when they share more information, they're more vulnerable, uh, sure. potentially more vulnerable, uh, because you're providing more and more details. So. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a bad idea to use your dog's name as a password if you're posting pictures of your dog because you just got this nice new puppy and you know it's all, it's, you know you trained it, you know it sits when you say sit and all that, you know, and sure. so you got all these pictures on Facebook and you got your dog's picture there and if you make your dog's name your password, people would notice that. Oh, no, you uh, think? You think? So penetration testing is alive and well. If you need some whitehead help, uh, if you need some help at all, go find it. Don't sit there and be a victim, and don't use your pet's password or your pet's name as your password. Uh, Andrew, the security guy, we're gonna sign off. Roddy, thank you so thank much you. for being here. Hope okay. to get you back in here soon. Aloha, everybody.